guests and our members. Before we begin, I would like to thank the committee with their assistance in helping put together this program for you today. We have two wonderful presenters that I will speak to uh, a little bit more on later. That's Nina James Weber and Ingrid Stanley. Of course, Chantel Naborn, our board chair, and Ms. Helen Marie, who's our IT guru, who's helping us set all this up and get into the system. So thank you guys. Our topic will be on genealogy, the road to getting there. So we're, we will be talking about how to get started if you've never even started, because we heard a new member said, I don't even know some of the stuff I need to do, as well as for some of you people who have been into the genealogy and then you hit roadblocks. So we're gonna try to address that as well. So I wanna tell you a little bit about the two people that will be presenting today. Nina James Weber is one of our newest members at La Creo, and she happens to be my younger sister. She is the historian for my family and has decades of experience in genealogy research. And Ingrid Stanley is our second presenter today. She is one of our founding members. She is currently our historian and a former board member. She also brings decades of knowledge in genealogy research. Now, before we begin our presentations, I just wanna go over a little bit of housekeeping with you guys. As Chantel said, we put everyone on mute um, while the people are presenting. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat room. We will be monitoring the chat rooms and we will address your questions at the end of the presentation. And at the end of both presentations, we're gonna, open it up to everyone where we will unmute people. What we are asking you to do is there's a little thing at the bottom where you see participants. If you click on that, it'll allow you to hit an emoji like raise your hand, put a heart or whatever. That will recognize that you have a question and we'll call on you so we can have that one-on-one -on -one interaction as we go forth toward the end of the presentation or the end of the meeting. Um, now, with all that said, I would like to uh, introduce Nina James Weber, and she will be uh, going over our pr first presentation. Good afternoon and welcome. Sides. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. We're waiting okay. for Helen to pull up your slides. Okay. <clears throat> can you see it? Yes, I Where's can. the slide? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nina, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me minimize this. And I will say, yes, if your box is in the way with everybody's picture, because you can't see the full slide, mm -hmm. then you minimize your box of pictures of people, I should say, so you can see the full slide, and then you pull it back up. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome. First thing. The first thing I'd like to say is that I don't consider myself to be an expert on genealogy. Rather, genealogy is something that I'm very passionate about. I've always loved exploring the past and the source of the past didn't matter to me, whether it was architectural, archeological, anthropological, or historical, the past has always fascinated me. So I guess it was a natural progression that genealogical exploration piqued my interest as well. I look at researching my family's history and ancestry as putting together a wonderful, intricate 3D puzzle, a puzzle that helps me, make, helps me understand myself better. My journey. My journey began at LSU in Baton Rouge, where I studied and worked in the LSU libraries. During breaks, I explored the special collections genealogical materials housed on campus. I started with census records. At the time, which was 1992, the latest census release was the 1920 census. Searching for my maternal grandfather, I discovered him as an 11-year-old child living with his family in New Orleans. And this began my foray into genealogy. Over the last 28 years, I started and stopped researching my ancestry many times. Along the way, I've discovered an appreciation for the lives of my ancestors, how they lived and uncovered a few interesting aspects of their lives. But today, 
I want to help guide you on your way of discovering and uncovering the stories of your ancestors. Start with what you know. Use information you know to be factual. Begin researching with what you know, like the names of your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents if known. That's a good place to start. Concentrate on locations where your family lived and places they may have migrated from. For my family, initial searches began in the 1880s of Point Capi, Ascension, and Orleans parishes. Be mindful of dates. Being mindful of dates like births, marriages, and deaths will help you assign relatives to the proper generation on your pedigree chart. Remember that historically in many Creole communities, the children of one family married siblings from a neighboring family. This means that many times you'll run across more than one person with the same or similar names, such as children named after their parents' siblings. So try to be cognizant of dates as much as possible. Focus your search. Focus your research by deciding on what you like to learn. One of the best pieces of advice I have is that you should try to focus your research on one family line at a time. This will greatly reduce the instance of misidentifying ancestors who share common surnames or familial birthplaces. Next, discover what information you're missing. What don't you know? You may only have pieces of disjointed information on a particular ancestor. Focusing your energies on discovering the unknown, one family member for one family line at a time will prove beneficial to your search. Speak with relatives. Speak with older relatives if possible. Speaking with other relatives, especially family elders, can offer a great opportunity to learn. Remember, they were there. They can help you obtain and verify information or dispute an account of a previously accepted event. Listen to their stories. Honor your family elders by listening to their stories. Many times these stories contain nuances that can add perspective to long ago occurrences. Things that they may consider to be insignificant can offer much needed relevance to the story of your family's history. Document or record your encounter for accuracy. Document as much as possible. Respectfully ask to copy photos, records, or newspaper clippings that they may have. Use their stories to help confirm or refute information previously known to you. Speaking with relatives can also lead your, your research into an unexpected direction. Identifying sources of additional information. The LSU Library Special Collections for Louisiana Populations, LSU Library Special Collections offers a wealth of information. It's one of the first places I'd start if my American ancestors were originally from Louisiana. The comprehensive files in this repository contain census records and slave schedules, birth, marriage, death, and burial records, church records, state military records, the Port of New Orleans passenger and crew list, land transfers, wills, probate, and estate records, as well as state newspaper archives. It's a treasure trove of in information about Louisiana residents. I've included a link to the PDF resource guide for your convenience. I don't know why you can't hear. Nina, are you here? Nina, unmute yourself. Nina? Yes? Okay. Uh, we okay, didn't know okay, if you were I'm speaking or not. Okay. Did you not hear me speaking? Uh, I'm not sure if you said anything about after you. Okay. I you, don't know. <laughs> you finished did did you hear any of it? Oh, yeah. We heard it, but I don't know. Okay. The LSU, while, okay so. the LSU slide was. Yeah, the LSU slide. slide. So it should be the free internet website slide. And then some, someone's asking to put that link in the chat. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, this one. Search the internet using free websites. 
There are two free genealogy websites that I highly recommend using, and they are the National Archives and Family Search. The National Archives and Records Administration organizes the National Archives site, and it has a host of civilian and military records, including information on colored red records. Family Search. I need the sound on it. Family Search is maintained by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, and it has one of the largest genealogical repositories in the world. DNA testing and analysis. Another tool that can be used during your genealogy search is DNA testing. DNA testing or genetic ancestry testing identifies the oh, you forward to press something on the side. Your results can be a great starting point for your family history research. And it can be a way to dig even deeper into the research you've already done. For Ancestry.com, Ancestry is the most popular of all Ancestry DNA websites. It has the largest DNA database and covers more populations and is more comprehensive than many of the others. 23andMe.com. 23andMe pioneered DNA medical testing. Not only does it identify potential DNA, family DNA matches, it also alerts you to potential health problems. GEDmatch.com. GEDmatch is an online service that allows users to upload their DNA files and compare it with DNA data files from different users who may have used other testing companies. For example, if you tested via Ancestry.com, your DNA can be matched with people who tested via, say, 23andMe. This opens up a larger pool of potential relatives. I wanted to highlight Ancestry.com because of all the special features it has. Ethnicity, ethnicity prediction, DNA matching, and through lines. The ethnicity part. Ancestry.com predicts your ethnic, genetic ethnicity. It compares your DNA to samples from, from around the world. This can be of help to you to help find out more about your family's background and ethnic history. Ancestry presents your DNA matches on a visual global map, which can help you pinpoint your family's migration pattern. Ancestry.com matches your DNA with both the maternal and paternal sides of your family tree, so it covers all lineages. Ancestry has enhanced DNA matching that looks at a broad range of your DNA, which help identify more familiar matches. And since it has the largest DNA database, you get more information about potential relatives. One of the coolest features about Ancestry.com is the new application called ThruLines. ThruLines shows identified descendants of a given ancestor who have tested on Ancestry and shares DNA with other testers. The ancestral path between the common ancestor and each DNA match is provided along with a predicted relationship and the amount of DNA shared. Doing research. Systematically explore your subject matter. Go through a list of what information you need to find and collect as much material as you can on each person or event. Remember to document everything and cite your sources. Keep a research log or set up a physical or digital filing system. Organize your research by family line. Create a family tree or pedigree chart to easily identify members of respective family lines. Use these tools to better organize your information. Make note of negative searches that don't produce any valuable information. Doing so can help you avoid duplicating unusual, unusable research. The images on this slide are draft registrations. On the left is my maternal great-grandfather's World War I draft registration card. This record contains his date of birth, place of birth, next of kin, home address, place of employment, and his signature. And on the right is a record of his father, my great-great-grandfather's Civil War draft registration. Brick walls. These are strategies and suggestions for researching slave ancestors. 
Hitting what's known as a brick wall refers to ancestors not easily located or family lines that abruptly disappear from records. This often occurs when researching slave enslaved ancestors. To tackle these occurrences, you have to be creative and informed. Become knowledgeable. Familiarize yourself with historical references and facts. For instance, knowing that the 1850 and 1860 census includes slave schedules and enumerated free people of color for the first time can help guide your research. Get creative. Use clues like if your ancestors of color aren't listed in the 1860 census, they most likely were enslaved and you can go to the slave schedules. Alternatively, you can scour manumission or freedom papers for your ancestral surnames. Since most free people of color were required to register at the parish courthouse, locating these records can uncover a wealth of information about your ancestors. The record on this page is taken from the 1850 census that enumerated free people of color in New Orleans, including my maternal great-great-grandmother. Analyze your data. Critically evaluate the information you discover before accepting it as fact or adding it to your tree. Closely examine everything. Look for direct evidence. Inquire about how well newly revealed information fits in with what's already known. For example, does the data confirm or contradict what you know to be factual about a person or event? Analyzing your data is the most critical part of researching your genealogy. You should always strive to have factual, historically accurate information in your research. Family surnames. The family names that I'm researching includes Arnard or Arno, Collins, Decour, Honoré, Lacour, Porsche, Ricard, Robert, and Tenor. These are the names from my maternal lineage. Some are noted on her partial pedigree chart that's shown. Out of my fam many family lines, I'm most interested in the Arnards or Arnos and the Collins because so little is known about those family lines in my family. Enjoy the ride. Though it can be difficult to, be, to painstakingly work through all of the information you will unearth, your genealogy journey should be a source of enjoyment. Try to appreciate the process. Sharing with family members. Collaborating with other family members who are researching your ancestry is a great place to start. Get together for an afternoon luncheon and compare your research or family tree data. Use the resources presented today to help you on your journey. Don't judge. The one thing I would caution is that as you discover your family history, try not to judge. Remember that you're researching people and people, yes, your ancestors too, have led complex lives. Be open to learning new things about your ancestors. Some of it will undoubtedly be a source of pride, but you may run across an unpleasant, unpleasant discovery and that's okay too. Appreciate learning more about your heritage. After all, it's your birthright. So share your findings, have fun, and enjoy the ride. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nina. That was, you did a great job. We really appreciate that. The only question that we had during this process was um, if someone had asked that we share the link to the LSU um, repository, which I've already put out there for everyone. Okay. Um, and to keep this flowing, we're going to go directly into Ingrid Stanley's presentation. Then after hers, we'll open it up to questions. So Ingrid. Wait one second. Um, we need to pull up your slides, Ingrid, and then you need to get off of mute, Ingrid. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I can't remember exactly what sparked my interest in genealogy, but at some point I came to realize that I knew absolutely nothing about my family history. I decided at that time that I wanted to find out what I could about my ancestors. 
However, I had to postpone my research because I was living in Florida at the time. And besides not knowing where to start, I didn't have a computer. So being a novice in family research, I did not actively pursue my research at that time. When we moved back to Louisiana, I bought a computer and the game was on. I have been researching my family history off and on ever since. I started with my mother's side of the family. They were from Point Coupee Parish, Louisiana. I recruited my sister and the research began. I was living in Slidell at the time, so one of the first things we did was go to the Coverton branch of the St. Tammany Parish Library, which had a genealogy center. This is where I first became aware of the Diocese of Baton Rouge Catholic Church record books. Since my mother and her family lived in this diocese, we began scrutinizing each volume, 19 at the time. This gave us a trove of information. We looked up all of the, our family names that we were aware of and made copies of each page. Yes, it was a lot, but it was worth it. We found birth, marriage, and death information going back to the 1700s. We found family lines we knew nothing about. It was exciting, and it still is. Researching your family history can be rewarding. Since my family wasn't very forthcoming with information, or perhaps didn't know, I depended on my individual research to find out where I came from. In doing your family research, you will learn things that you never imagined. One of my most rewarding achievements was finding my slave ancestors. It took a while to connect all the dots, but eventually it all came together. Examples of some of my slave ancestors are Isabella. She was emancipated in 1822. In 1826, Isabella appeared in the Point Coupe Parish Courthouse before Judge Domino to register as a free person. She presented her emancipation document and the clerk of court wrote word for word what was in the document. The document stated that John M. Walker of Point Coupe Parish, Louisiana, appeared in the mayor's office in Cincinnati, Ohio, for the sole purpose of emancipating Isabella. She was dis described in the document as about 20 years old, tall and slender, and of dark complexion. Needless to say, I was ecstatic to find this information and surprised that she was emancipated in Ohio. Isabella and John M. Walker are my third great-grandparents. Raymond, he was freed in 1792. Raymond's natural father, Hippolyte Porsche, or Porsche, a Point Coupe Parish, purchased his freedom from Marguerite Mayo. Raymond's mother, Frenchinette, was a slave of Mayo and was not freed at that time. Raymond was about two years old. Raymond is my fourth great-grandfather. Adelaide. Adelaide was a house slave of Louis Bottery in New Orleans. The date she obtained her freedom is unknown. However, she gained, however, after she gained her freedom, she worked over a decade in order to buy her children out of slavery. Adelaide is my fifth great-grandmother. Researching your family history can be overwhelming, but also very satisfying. You will find information that will fill you with amazement and admiration. One case in point is my great-grandfather, Paul Sick. My paternal grandmother never spoke of her father. He was a mystery. After years of not being able to find much on Grandpa Paul, I hit the mother load. In searching through census data, archival do documents, and newspaper articles, I was able to put together the character of the man. I found that his wife died at the early age of 34, leaving him with four young children to raise by himself. I also found that he was deeply involved in politics and was a political activist and advocated voting for people of color. Who knew? I had no idea. I have shared with you a few of my family research results in hopes that they will inspire you to do your family history. Okay. 
Everything's okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Ingrid, I think you're fine. We can all hear you. Okay, just, great. Give a thumbs up, everybody, if you can hear. Give a thumbs up. Okay, Ingrid, you're good. Okay. However, you must be aware that sometimes the information you may find may not, excuse me, may not be a positive experience. Some hints for you if you are just getting started. Use internet tools. Explore archival records, courthouses and libraries, etc. Interview family members. Make a folder or binder for each family you are researching. Be sure to note the date and place you obtain any document or piece of information. If you don't, you will regret, regret it later on. Enter your information in a family tree program. This helps you keep organized and you can review your data at the click of a button. Some internet tools are Ancestry at Ancestry.com, paid membership required, Family Search at FamilySearch.org, free membership, Genealogy Bank, GenealogyBank.com, a newspaper resource, paid membership is required. Afro-Louisiana History and Genealogy, Gwendolyn Mitlow Hall Slave Database, it's a free access. Also, as mentioned earlier, the Diocese of Baton Rouge Catholic Church records can be extremely helpful. There, there are 22 volumes consisting of baptismal, marriage, and burial records. The baptismal records often include the date of birth and names of the parents. There is also a book of only baptismal records from 1901 to 1905. In addition, they published the church records from 1770 to 1900 on individuals without surnames, slaves and free people of color for the parish of Poncoupi. They also published a book of Catholic church records for those without surnames for the parishes of East and West Baton Rouge and the Feliciana parishes ranging from 1800 through 1880. The Archdiocese of New Orleans also published a set of Catholic church records from 1718 to 1831, 19 volumes. You can access volumes one through 11 online at nolacatholic.org forward slash publication. Both the Diocese of Baton Rouge and the Archdiocese of New Orleans books are available for purchase from the diocese and are also housed in the New Orleans main library. Genealogy is never ending, but you can reach a point where you can share your findings with your family. One way to do this is to combine all of your research in a book or journal and give to your family members. Lastly, even though there are many books of interest, I will share with you three selections. They, they are older books, but very informative and are still available on Amazon. They are Along the River Road by Mary Ann Sternberg, includes little vignettes of the families living in the area. Some of the names mentioned are Bouligny, Dugas, De Planche, Prevost, Turo, and more. Creoles of Color in the Bayou Country by Carl A. Brasso. The book explores Louisiana's three-tiered society, whites, free people of color, and slaves, which existed in the antebellum era. Research information is given on the following families, Lamel, Donato, Glapion, Ricard, and Simeon, among others. White by, Demi White by Definition by Virginia Dominguez includes pedigree charts, court cases, illustrations, and graphs. The introduction is excellent. It analyzes 1982 court case of Susie Phipps, who was raised as white, but later found out that she was a Creole of color, and at the age of 48, went to court to have herself legally declared as white. Her case was defeated in the courts. Some of the names I am researching are Bartholomew, 
Badere, De Queer, Domaine, Harlow, Honore, Lamel, Moran, Petain, Pore, Rogers, Sig, Stanley, Turo, Tunwa, and Walker. I hope that this information encourage you to start or perhaps resume your family research. If there is anything I can do to help, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thanks again for being with us today. Well, thank you, Ingrid. I appreciate that. You did a great job and you actually gave them a lot of information. Um, someone has asked for the name of the books. I'm going to go ahead on and pull up your thing and post that out there for everyone. So now what we're going to do, everyone, is if you take yourself off of mute, we're going to go ahead on and open it up to any questions that you guys may have, um, any blocks that you have, anything that we can assist you with or help direct you um, to either start your journey, help you get past a roadblock in your journey, anything that we can help you with, we're here to help you. So. Um, the floor is open. I'll take it. Hello. Yes. All right. Hey, I'll, I'll uh, two kind of two question uh, question and a comment. I'm sorry. Thank you, presenters. It was wonderful, and I'm I'm taking notes on thinking. <laughs> it's helping me to I think to reorganize myself Can as I go along name, doing this. Please? I'm sorry. Could you announce your name, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Pat Ferrand. Okay, uh, uh, Pat Boisier Ferrand. Um, the NOLA, the, 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 you know, the, the NOLA Catholic .org, uh, is Do they actually have documents or ind indices or, you know, how, what, what information do you get on there? I'm, when I'm looking, I'm looking for, 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 for uh, sacramental records. Does oh, NOLA you're, talking about, you're talking about the Archdiocese of yeah. New Orleans? Catholic. Yeah. If you look it up, it'll have all the information that's actually in the books. Okay. Have, you look I, I've seen the books, but you can can you actually get get the documents and 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 stuff that's in the books online? You have to order them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Long, but if, if I could get index information, that would help greatly as well. Because I was, right, right. Because yeah. when you look it up, they'll have the information that you would need to order the book. Okay. The document. Right. The document. All right. And then, secondly, the the researches that there are the the resources that are not free, like the like Ancestry.com. I just wanted to note. I guess I'm in a bubble up here in Washington D.C., so I've got three or four different areas that I can go to and look and and use their computers for free. Uh, I don't know if if the if the main library in New Orleans or some of the some of the major facilities would have access to to computers for people to research uh, to to have the Ancestry Institution. Um, program. Yes. yes. I just want to point that out in case people can look for it to keep from having to pay because I, I, I go to I would go to the National Archives, to the Library of Congress, to mm -hmm. uh, the Mormon Center, a family history research, but I'm sure there's somewhere <laughs> in major metropolitan areas that they would have it for free. Yeah, most of the main libraries have ancestry free. Okay. Yeah, I, the main library definitely does, but I know most of the libraries do. Okay. You just have to have this is Catherine about, you have to have a library card. Right, I'm working on getting one right. now from, from New Orleans. Yeah. All right. You may want to check with the, with the main library where you are because in Baton Rouge and New Orleans right now, you can access the library edition of Ancestry through mm -hmm. your library card, which is their version, which oh, is yeah. much yeah. better than what we yeah. did. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah that's no, good. I, I had that's access really it. great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Helen, if you would take um, the question and answer slide off and let everyone see the panel so we can see everyone's face, feel like we're in a room together talking. Oh, she wants to do the panel. Let's see if they can see me. Stop sharing my screen. So you should be able to switch to gallery view so that you can see everyone. Thank you. Yeah, but it still it still minimizes the number of people you can see with yeah. the slides. So yeah. can we stop presentation maybe? Is that what we're asking? Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Okay, stop share. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Okay, All right. And I, it looks like Mia, you're putting the books. Uh, Pat uh, Ferran asked that the, the books be listed. Yes. Okay. And actually, Nina, I don't know if uh, Nina and um, Ingrid would mind if we, you know, share those because they've got the links already in the presentation, those slides that have the book. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, great. Okay. So each of you guys, will, I will email it to you so you can have the actual, uh, the, the list just as they had in the presentation. And just so you know, this is also being recorded. So we're gonna post the recording of the presentations as well. Okay. Um, just in a general question, as we see one of the comments is I'm interested in a few things, land plots, plots for the Davila and Viegas families and the country of origins of uh, particular people, Alexandra Dabie, Justine Amplement, and Agnes Clavery. This is actually family oh, of here in St. Tammany Parish, but anybody has any tips on getting records about land? Why am I on it? For some reason, whatever they did, it had the cameras back to the people. Who oh, wait, we're, we're off on uh, everybody's on mute. Watts, can you go that on works. mute? mute. <laughs> uh, Patricia Watts, can you go on mute for your conversation so we don't hear it, please? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, well. <laughs> And then, and, and if, actually, if anybody else wants to just mute themselves, and then you'll unmute if you speak. But you could see some of the questions in chat. Um, but does, does anybody have any good tips on acquiring information about land, land plots, or, or anything in particular about connections to St. Tammany Parish? Uh, this is Arthur Durbany. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Ingrid mentioned the uh, the uh, Archdiocese in Baton Rouge as a source. I had been uh, in contact with <clears throat> Rene Richard at that mm -hmm. Archdiocese. Yeah. And but since COVID, she said that department has mm -hmm. at least temporarily been shut down because they don't have yeah. the staff for it. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how much information we can get from them at this moment. Right. Okay. That's true. I have I have a set of the Baton Rouge diocesan books. And if you had specific information, contact me and I'll look it up for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll be happy to do that also. I have a set, so Patty right. can help you with that. They're right here. I don't know if I can yeah. here do I right up here. <laughs> oh wow. All right, I don't think Janelda can speak, but Janelda, those are some contacts that uh, we can make there. And we'll have emails. Jeannie's raising her hand. I'm here, Chantel. Oh, there's Janelda. Okay, wait, Janelda Piegas can speak. And yeah, because I, I just joined the audio. Okay, we hear Jeannie's raising her hand. Janelda, did you get oh, that? I'm here, actually, thank you. Um, I think there's a place in Baton Rouge, the archives, National Archives in Baton Rouge. I haven't made it there but I would like to see what the ownership, property ownership is for um, historically for the family members. And also just real quickly, I heard somebody mention the Donel, uh, Donato and Lamel families mm -hmm. um, who are here in St. Landry Parish. I am in touch with both families. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Thank you. All right, Jeannie Ayler. Yeah, I just had a, um, a comment about the Archdiocese. They also have online that you can, for the Catholic Cemetery, St. Louis, ones, two, and three, and the other ones, you can look up uh, surnames uh, and where they're buried. And um, recently, when I did that, looking for my father, and he wasn't listed, and of course, this is, I'm sorry, when I said recent, this is before, a little bit before COVID. Um, I went and called them and asked, could I get everybody who's listed at that burial site? And they were able to do that for me because I had the location for it. And I discovered some folks in there I did not know were relatives. Yeah. <laughs> so it was an interesting turnabout. 
but you can go in and just search for your surname and it'll tell you where they're buried. In, and what in, is it again? Buried in, huh? What is it again? On, in, on, on the Archdiocese of New Orleans website oh. uh, for the Catholic cemeteries, you Catholic can do a cemetery. search. Okay. Yeah, for, for the Catholic cemeteries. And another thing, the um, the archives in Baton Rouge sells a book and I'd have to run out my room and go get it because I can't tell you the exact title. But, you know, at one time after the Americans uh, came in, free people of color had to come in and register to mm. prove that they were free. Wow. Now it's not comprehensive, but what I like about it is a lot of times you'll get a description of the person, where they may be originally from mm. and their occupation. Yeah. And it's it's uh, online to, to purchase. And I've gotten some, uh, made some really good connections from that. Oh yeah, that is good. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. That's really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. What right. is that again, Jean? Oh, I have to run out and get. Let me run out and get the book. Look, <laughs> that book walks. Let me see. That. And then yeah, and then type the title in the chat box too. All right. I was looking to see if anybody else was raising their hands, and I can't catch everybody. Mark had an announcement, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he wants to speak on it, but Mia was going to bring it up. <laughs> Speaking of family stories and histories and a good reference point, um, La Creo just recently published a book called Family Legacies. And Mark's message was through La Creo's new book, Family Legacies, Our History Told Through Stories and Tributes, you will find over 100 family stories and many more surnames within its pages. So it can be purchased at amazon.com. Uh, there are two editions of it. There's a black and white copy because there's images and pictures and stuff for $25. And then there's a deluxe color edition for uh, $50. But it does benefit our organization. It's one of our highlights of the year. And again, over a hundred stories, uh, personal stories and good reference points for um, genealogy and research and interests. So if anybody's interested there, you can look into family legacies. Okay, I've got it. It's called the New Orleans Register of Free People of Color. Okay. And New it's Orleans 1840 Register. to 1864. And I'll put it in the um, chat thing. Thank you. Where did you purchase it again? Um, the archives in Baton Rouge. Look okay. at the page. Yeah. Okay. Nine members can the purchase them also. In the, uh, in the chat, you actually, the, the publisher is not the archives, it is actually Lake Comite. Yeah. 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 Okay. Group for the uh, for the archives. And I just put uh, their website, lakecomite.org, in Good. the chat. And you can purchase that as well as some other uh, documents from them. Oh, good. Thank you. One other question. I don't know how much time we have. I noticed your slide at the beginning had names, surnames that people had submitted. Yes. Are we going to touch on that? Or I was kind of interested because I saw one I submitted, then I saw the variation of one of the names I submitted. And I said, well, I don't know who did that. It could have been my aunt. I don't know. She's on here somewhere. <laughs> so are you, did everybody see the slide with the, the coffee cup? Some awesome graphics from Helen Marie. I don't know if yeah. Helen's able to pull it up real briefly. But sure. in registration, you all were asked to submit some surnames that you're interested in for researching purposes. So that's a um, that's what we're we were looking at. I'm sorry, Helen, were you about to speak? Okay, maybe I'm, I can't get the image up and I don't know if Helen just heard me or not. Mia, you didn't have that uh, graphic, did you? I do, I, so hold on. While we're waiting for it, did anybody else have any questions? And I mean, you could raise your hand or maybe I could see you or you could just speak up by unmuting yourself. Oh, here's the screen share. Okay. So, oh, there it is. Okay. Those were the names that were submitted by you all who registered. And I mean, that's just a tip of the iceberg, as they would say. But anything that stands out, 
And if you see a name, you want to speak on it, and maybe the person that submitted can it, uh, identify themselves. And yes, we can connect you with that person. So maybe you can talk and share information. Well, Ms. Jeannie, actually, Nikki Epps is online. Nikki Epps Baham, and she said she knows you. Um, oh, yeah. oh, oh, Nikki, Nikki, um, Nikki, Nikki baby, you with my daughter, Nikki. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Nikki. Okay. Yes, Nick, you did the debut. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Joe and Shirley's daughter. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but I don't think we're connected, huh, Nikki? No. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I do see here, I don't know. Okay, I submitted Serena, S-O-R-I-N-A. And I noticed somebody submitted Sereno, S-E-R-I-N-O. Is there anybody out here looking that submitted Sereno? Because I do know from my research, um, <laughs> It's one of those, how can I say it? It was originally Serena and there was a line that went to Sereno. So it's it's actually the same line. And I did not find out until later, I went to school with a cousin I never knew was a cousin because she was a Sereno. <laughs> spelling different uh, variation. It, it's yeah, somebody thinking. stepped outside of the line for whatever reason and disassociated <laughs> themselves. <laughs> and that happened. <laughs> They took the spelling Sereno. Oh. Yeah. But uh, one of the comments I wanted to make too on your sister, your sister did an excellent job. Um, I can't remember my first name. Um, Mia. Mia. Um, when yeah. she said about the, the land that people owned here and a lot of times too, you know, they went to notaries and a lot of our ancestors didn't speak English. And so they go to these notaries and they're signing paperwork and not realizing that the notary is actually giving themselves a share of what's going on or they're devaluing the land that they're selling for the family. So, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that they didn't, they didn't speak English because they were still speaking French. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's also a big thing. Um, they t uh, I recently came across and read some stuff and um, Shalmet Pat, well, in Shalmet, where Judge uh, Leander Perez actually forced people by gunpoint to sign over their land. And people are now finding information where they're going back fighting for their land, their ancestors at, because they went by gunport and forced them to sign over their rights because of all the oil and stuff they found down there. Empire, Louisiana. I know, baby, I work for Shell and that stuff was held up for a long time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and if there, I, if that's one common thing. We do hear a lot of the stories where because of education and a lack of or because of uh, white superiority where we have lost land. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story on my grand on my dad's side. My grandfather. Um, what happened was, and, and they're from the St. James area, um, St. James Parish, and um, they were opening about to build a subdivision. And um, what happened was, when they started doing the research before they can sign, you know, sell it and so forth, it came to find out that a great great grandfather, great great whatever of ours, had owned that property. And before they could even do it, they had stole it. And literally, they had to do the detailed research that eventually had to compensate the family members before anything could be done with that land. Um, and that was, we didn't even know that I was in high school when that happened. Um, and so, yes, that stuff has happened throughout history and we need to be aware of that stuff. And, and as like what Nina was telling you, as you research stuff, you're gonna find good things, bad things. 
And you just got to be open into receiving that information because that's what made you, you and your family who they are, you know, good, bad and ugly. <laughs> yep. Always. Um, did anybody else uh, submit the Shashari name? Because I have a cousin who's on here now who's connected to Sashari family, but I, I didn't know if she submitted it or somebody else did. And we do have Sashari's who are longtime members of La Creo, but I don't know his uh, connection. I think his family was from, um, oh, Mobile. Oh. Mobile. Mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mobile. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they relocated to Mobile along the way or if they were always in Mobile. I don't remember that. I think they were in Mobile, just like the Fonderettes. They were in Mobile. They were and already there. English yeah. rule, they came to New Orleans because it was under French. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I was in touch with that girl many, many years ago. Um, I can't remember her name, uh, but I do believe uh, he was related to the De Quincey Appaloosa Sashries. Her father was related to the De Quincey Appaloosa Sashries. Okay. No mobile connection, though. What, I mean, Janelle, no, no, they were in Mobile. Right? Um, the family was in Mobile. The younger family was in Mobile, from Mobile. And I can't remember their names right now. Oh, okay. company. Uh, so, but yeah, they were related through the Opelousas, um, the Quincy Sashries. Okay, gotcha. Anyone else? Hi, <laughs> Somebody's audio, hold on. Try it again. Hi, Louise Simmons. Yes, we can hear you, but it's very muted. I mean, it's really hard to understand you. Let me ask you a question. Are you going through your computer and you also have a phone on or something? Or it's just, you know, it's just one? I think you have two sources of audio on. So if you have an audio on with your camera and an audio on the computer is competing. Yes. Okay, try again, speak up again. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I just want to tell Jeannie that I did in fact put those names in there. <laughs> the, Serena. the Serena and the Fonderet names and the Crocker also. The different variations of the name. Yeah. Okay, that was me. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked the question, where can we find the template to our family names? I love this. What template are you referring to? The one that's um, on screen right now? Um, that was- Denise. Denise, who asked that question? Denise, you want the graphic of the coffee cup with the names? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, say that again, please. I didn't hear you. Your question was that you um, you really like the um, the uh, where did her, where did her question go template the oh template. the template for our, your family names what template are you referring to is it the one that's on screen right now correct correct yes okay. Helen Marie can send that out when she sends out the two presentations so yes perfect. we can send that that's out good. perfect perfect. Mia, that actually was created with a program online. Oh. And so you can use any list of words or in this case names, uh -huh. and then the, the program will make it into what they call a word cloud. So the website's actually called wordclouds.com. I think so she just wants a copy of this. Is yeah, that I would, no, 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 I, I want it. 
I wanted to copy, yeah, I wanted to copy this template so I can put our family names. This is a beautiful idea. Oh, got I mean, it. So she needs to use your own to create that. I got you. So I'll I'll put that in the chat. It was a site called Word uh, WordClouds.com, and okay. um, you can use it to create a similar image. And it doesn't. It's I just happened to find a coffee cup, so it was perfect. But you can use other sorts of uh, shapes and colors and different kinds of fonts and stuff. It's kind of fun. So. <laughs> so. Um... Uh, guys, uh, we're down to uh, three minutes left on the um, this meeting. So do y'all have any final questions before we wrap up? I'm not rushing you off. <laughs> I'm just asking. Uh, well, and then a lot of people are speaking on and telling others that they have certain names in their family. So maybe we could speak on how we could connect them or how they should connect. Yes. Yeah, so um, one of the things that we asked you when you signed up was uh, whether or not you were willing to share your information with the people uh, that had signed up for this. And if that is the case, we will go ahead and uh, when everything sends out, we'll send out those emails, addresses with the person's name so that with the person's name, with the email addresses and the family members that they say they were researching, maybe each one of y'all can connect if there is a connection some kind of way through email and sharing information to make sure that um, it'll, it'll help you with your research. Um, but that's what we had planned to do, and that's why that question came out. So we will send that out as well. And Mia, yeah, I'll just know we did have a few people that preferred not to, so it will only include those that said it was okay to share their information. That is correct. Thank you, so you know. for saying that. Sure. Okay. I have one other, one other comment. Um, before we uh, get off. Um, and if you go on the La Creole website and just search through the index of all the journals that have been put out over the last, what, 12, 12 years or so, um, you may find some family names in there with stories related. So that's a, a good thing to look through also is the index for the La Creole journals. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very Thank good you. point, yeah. I had planned on mentioning all of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, thank you. You said awesome. three minutes. <laughs> I should have thought about that. I didn't. <laughs> yep, still a good point. Yep, it is. You, there, there, well, just to let y'all all know, um, for especially for our guests and to remind our members that lacreo.org, which is our website, is one is a very good resource. We have a lot of links out there to help you get to some of those uh, resources that we mentioned throughout these the presentations. Uh, we also have our journals out there, which they just said that you can you can even purchase them. They're not that expensive, you know, between twelve and fifteen dollars, I guess. Um, not a lot of money. Where you can do their stories and you can get the researches on uh, information on the names. We've also had that new publication, which Mark and Chantel just brought up about our family legacies, which is our personal stories and experiences um, that we have published. And we're very proud of that. And so we encourage you can go on amazon.com and get that. Um, that, that resource is available. Um, just to let you know, if you're not a member, especially for our guests, and you're interested in becoming one, it is really not expensive. For a family membership, is $55. So we encourage you to um, register because th these are some of the things that we sponsor and we invite guests to them. So become a member. You'll get to experience all this great stuff we get to do and meet people and share your information. Also, as a nonprofit family research organization, we do take donations to help us keep this going. Um, so if you don't want to join, but you 
do in kind like what we're doing and want to uh, donate to us, we have a really big donation button out there that uh, we would like you to donate. Um, but, you know, again, I want to thank everyone for coming, especially our guests. We hope that you learned something from us today. Um, also to our members, we hope that we uh, helped you and gave you a little bit more information that can help you in your journey. Um, and we've enjoyed putting this together for everyone. And uh, thank, thank you. you. And thank I want you. to say thank you to Mia, who is La Creo's, La Creo's uh, program chair, one of her big first events. So mm -hmm. thank you, Mia. Very good. Great job. And thank you to Helen Marie, who is our administrative uh, manager, but she's also our person who always gets us through these meetings on a tech end and the logistics. So thank you, Helen, for the slides and the beautiful features and graphics. Job well done. And Definitely thank you to our presenters, uh, Ingrid and Nina, for your expertise. And thank Absolutely. you all for being here on the behalf of La Cria. Thank it was you. really nice. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank there's you. little reactions. If you Bye. see your buttons, there's reactions you can make if you, everybody want to go out. <laughs> and that, that La Cria mug that Ingrid is using is available for purchase on the website. Okay. Oh, good. Good plug, Jeannie. So yes, our website, all the tabs, history, info, resources, and shop La Creo. Absolutely. Sorry, <laughs> too. Sorry, too. You know, logo on it. All right. Well, thank you all. We really thank enjoyed you. this. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice. Oops. Mom, you can log off. I'm logging. Well, I wanted to see the faces. they <laughs> <laughs> are disappearing. I'll only see thank you. Okay, bye. bye. It was wonderful. Bye. All right.